Hello everybody, it's Christmas 2009. It's the end of the year, end of every year I like to look through my to-do list and see if there's any projects that I can finish or complete before the end of the year during my vacation. This year one of the projects one of the projects I had on my to-do list was to get Linux on my Intel S4000E NAS server. Now this is an embedded device and we need to get into embedded Linux for some time. Now as a close-up of the NAS server, the Intel SS4000E. As you can see, there's space for four drives and they connect to a SATA controller which connects to the motherboard and the SATA controller does not do hardware RAID you have to do RAID in software using um, software RAID Now this device poses a number of challenges because I could not simply connect to it over the network or via TFTP to install my Linux image on it I had to connect via serial cable The additional challenge was that the serial cable is non-standard so I had to build my own serial cable by soldering a ribbon a cable ribbon to a DB2 connector. Yeah, you can see a close-up of the onboard COM port, the DL10 connector, which connects to the um, the DL10 plug on the end of the ribbon, which you will see in the next shot. And then I had to solder the DB9 female connector. It was very difficult finding the correct pin outs for this. Um, eventually, I found them, and I managed to connect via Minicom from my PC to the to the NAS server. This is the first step in actually getting Linux onto this device because you have to interrupt the boot process. By pushing Control C. Yeah, here is a close-up of the null modem cable I had to construct in order to get the device to connect to my PC and get output on the serial cable. You can see here the DL10 connector or plug that needs to connect to the COM port on the EM72010 Intel board, which is a basis for this NAS device. Um, these components to build this cable are available for your local electronics shop and they were available quite cheaply. I got mine for under oh, 10 Rand to, for, to construct the whole cable. The other end of the cable needs to connect to a DB9 female connector and this is where you need to do the soldering. The information that I found on the internet about the correct pin assignments was incorrect. I managed to find one site eventually had the correct pin assignment. So after many trial and error attempts I got it right and I actually managed to get output on my Minicom um, screen through the serial cable. This was the, probably the most challenging part of the project for me was getting the wiring correct. Okay, I know the soldering is not great. It was my first. So we have the DL10 socket connected and it's connected via the ribbon cable to our null one cable that we just made all the way to the back of the PC. The next thing to do is to install a serial communication program into your Linux environment so you can communicate with the device over the serial cable. I use in this particular demonstration GTK term, but you can use Minicom or any other of the various varieties of serial communication programs that are on your distribution. Key thing to get right is obviously the, the protocol settings for the communication over the serial cable. In my particular case, I had to use stop bit 0, bits 8, parity none, and flow control none. And in most cases, you'll be using the device TTYS0. That is the first COM port on your, on your machine. It might be TTYS1 if it's COM port 1. Okay, so then we turn on the server, and you'll see the console output flying past on your serial communication program. As you can see, the device is already running a version of Linux. We're just going to put Debian Linux on there, one that we can control, and you know, add features as we see fit. Okay, so the point of this post was to verify that your serial cable was working before you continue any further with the process of installing Linux on this device. The next step is to set up a hub which will connect one of the two network points on the NAS device and other one obviously to your computer. You'll use this to access the web interface the, that comes standard with the firmware on the device to upload a pre-built Linux firmware image which you'll get from the Debian ARM site. Once you upload this image through the firmware upgrade um, page of the, of, the, so of the firmware application, you'll then have to reboot your machine once it's finished loaded to actually start the Debian ARM install process. This is actually one of the easiest ways to get Debian onto this device. Another way is to build the kernel by hand, which I might cover later in this video. But this way is the easiest and quickest way to get Debian on the device. Once it is finished uploading, you'll then reboot the device and you'll connect to it via your serial cable and you'll see the install process beginning. Okay, so to install the firmware, I browse to it and I install it. I have it on my iPod which is running Rockbox uh, there it is install it put in the administrator password 
and go upgrade. And it goes through the upgrade process. And it counts down to 100%. To get the right image for the Debian um, installer, you go to www.debian.org forward slash devel forward slash Debian dash installer. And then you look for the option for other images, netboot, USB stick, floppy, etc. And choose the RML architecture. There you'll be taken to a subdirectory and you must choose the IOP 32x directory to get your the image that you would like to use to, to flash onto the drive. So this you'll see there's a special um, folder underneath there once you go to IOP 32x netboot for the SS4000E. And this is where you'll go to pick up the SS4000E.pkg file which you'll use to upload to your um, the firmware page on the I then follow the steps as documented in the Debian installer documentation. So once the upgrade process is complete, we have to reboot the machine in order to finish the installation of the Linux image on the machine. So at the red boot prompt, I close up fconfig space boot underscore script underscore data if config boots underscore script underscore data we then get enter script turn that with the empty line we then need to run the flash installation system fizz load ram disk gz Is load Z image. Fizz load Z image. And then the last line, which is the exact command. If you watch the console output, you'll see the familiar um, Linux boot process starting. Eventually, the Debian installer will start up and it will begin to detect your hardware as well as detect the network. Um, port on the NAS device. It will assign an IP address and tell you what that IP address is and give you the option to connect to continue the installation process by SSH. It is recommended to do it this way because then you can choose the expert options to actually finish the installation process and customize the installation process to your needs. Although in this video tutorial I'm showing you how to install Debian on the NAS server using the Debian installer, there's also another way of doing it which is basically doing it manually. In fact, I had to end up doing it manually myself um, and I learned a lot more through that process. There's not enough space in this video tutorial to cover that. I hope this tutorial has helped somebody and will help you in the installation process on your own Intel SS4000E NAS server. Thanks and goodbye.